E. It is Alfredia Flowers. Once again, we are on our journey together. The Basics in 21 Days by Benjamin and Michael Joy Williams. This is something just, it's food for your soul, food for your spirit, man. So I just want to start with prayer and then we'll jump right into day eight, spiritual gifts. Father, I just thank you for the teaching that you've given to the Williams. I thank you for the food for, for your sons and your daughters. I thank you. I say, come Holy Spirit and illuminate this for us and help us to digest and use what you're teaching in Jesus' name. God is all powerful and can do anything, but most of all, God is love. And this powerful God enjoys demonstrating his love powerfully. First John chapter four, verse eight. One of the ways he does this is by giving spiritual gifts. These gifts are not for showing us off or for any selfish gain, but to show off the love of God to hurting and needing people. So God gives us a gift to bless others. I say this because these gifts are beyond human ability. They are powerful. Some people even tried to buy him in Acts chapter 8, verse 18, but the gifts cannot be bought. You have to receive them and then use them. And I'm going to skip down and read a little bit here. Some call, let me just go back one more. The, these gifts can only be received and then used to help others. The gifts come from the Holy Spirit are, are actually packaged in receiving him, receiving the Holy Spirit, because the Bible says we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Various churches believe different things about receiving the Holy Spirit. Some call it the baptism in the Holy Spirit, while others call it receiving the fullness of the Spirit. Still others call it actualizing the Spirit. Others say simply receiving the second half of the first blessing. Confusing, huh? It would be worthwhile for you to ask your pastor the belief of your church, to talk to God about it and read the recommended books. A good foundation is built by knowing that God gives the spirit to all who ask. And that's in Luke chapter 11, verse 13. And reading the first two chapters of the book of Acts. And really, that's how I received my spiritual baptism in the Holy Spirit was someone told me about it, told me about it. And I read in, in Luke chapter 11, verse 13, and also Acts. And then I just asked the Father to give me the Holy Spirit baptize me in the Holy Spirit, because after all, when you're born again, you have a new spirit, but you can get more. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. The, God is so big, we can't even contain all of who he is. So some spiritual gifts can be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It is not limited to these gifts, but this list provides more, the more common ones. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1 talks about specifically the gift of prophesying. And so here we go. We, he talks a little further and he talked about one of the benefits. He talked about in Jude chapter one, verse 20. And he talks about tongues. It says, people consider the least of these gifts speaking in other tongues. This is not meant to imply that you don't need this gift, but it's, it's called this because it's the only gift that focuses on you yourself rather than giving it out. Because in it, it, Jude, it talks about building up your most holy faith, praying in the spirit. All other gifts are intended to benefit others. I believe it should. we should pray in tongues. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18 and 39. However, if you only speak in tongues and are not motivated out of love to use the other gifts to help people, then you're speaking in tongues has little value before God. If you think I'm too harsh, read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 
Amen. So let's go. Let's look a little further at what he's saying. And it talks about, starts talking about some of the gifts. And he talks about the word of knowledge, how sometimes people get a word of knowledge for someone else. For example, pain. Someone say, for example, if I all of a sudden have a head pain and I don't usually have a head pain and, and, I, and I believe that it's God wants to heal somebody that has a pain. And I just, just say, um, I believe that God has desires to heal someone. Is there anyone here that's having pain on in their head, having a headache or, um, or sometimes it's cancer. And I've, I've seen God cause the pain to suddenly leave from a word of knowledge. And it's amazing. He's just tuning us into what it is that he is doing. God works through others as, as they themselves begin to see more of these gifts operating in their own lives. And so there are many more. That's just one of the gifts. And so you can look at all of the gifts of the spirit, but we just he just covers here. He just highlights that particular one. It says reading books on God has used how he's used his gifts on others is a good way to learn how to operate in these gifts. And then now he goes on to talk about reading John chapter eight, still yourself and place yourself in John chapter eight, verses one through 11. Come to Jesus after verse 11 and ask him one of these questions. What spiritual gifts have you already given me? What spiritual gifts do you want me to pursue? And so a good thing we we didn't he didn't really go through uh, listing the spirit the gifts of the spirit but that's really good to begin to look at what they are as you begin to pursue how God wants you to use the spiritual gifts and and that and how to bless others I know there have been times that God used me in different gifts some more than others and then there are other seasons where it, it seems to shift and so this is in chapter 12 he talks about now concerning spiritual gifts brothers i do not want you to be ignorant and he goes on to say verse 4 there are diverse gifts but the same spirit and there are different ministries but the same lord there are diversities of activities but the same god who works in all but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one to profit all to one, he's given the word of wisdom. Now, wisdom, that's knowing what to do with the knowledge that you have, how to operate in it. To another, the word of knowledge, knowing something that only God has told you. And I, I, for example, I had a, in prayer, God gave me a word of knowledge about a lady that I was praying for concerning her housing situation and the lord told me she's going to need housing and i want you to let her live with me so i mentioned to my pastor sure enough i said if this lady comes to you and says she needs housing i'm gonna you know tell her to call me of course that was really hard god and i wrestled a little while because i didn't really know her and i wasn't excited about sharing my house with somebody i just sat on a pew with but didn't really know but it turned out to be a beautiful thing we became great sisters in the lord and it was a transitional time for her and it was a healing time so God knows what he's doing. So that was a word of knowledge. Another faith by the same spirit. And we, I experienced a group. God gave my family just a, a group anointing for the spirit of faith to believe for God to raise my little niece who was born dead. God raised that baby back and she's now six months old. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. Born in the pandemic, a miracle. Another gifts of healing by the same spirit. And again, I've seen God heal. Sometimes my hands will get really hot if God wants to use my hands to heal someone. Or sometimes I'm just I'm speaking a word. You could just speak a word. God can give you that the ability to the, give you the words to say to bring healing to someone who's not even in the same vicinity with you. The working of miracles. Wow. I've already mentioned that faith. Some of these work together like that gift of faith that God gave us supernaturally we began to call forth my niece to come forth like like um Lazarus and Talitha Kumai was the last thing that the family said over this baby and then she she was soon born and and that was also was a miracle connected with the gift of faith because 
she was dead, had been dead for days in the womb. And they saw her heartbeat go from 150 down to zero. And she was not breathing, but she is alive and well today. And let's move on. So, okay, the different ones, discerning of spirits. And that's being able to discern. Uh, sometimes it's the presence of a spirit. Sometimes it's godly. Sometimes it's, it's not this is the presence. And sometimes you can just go in a place and sense the spirit there, or even the spirit of heaviness or there. So there are different ways to operate in discerning of spirits, different kinds of tongues. And sometimes the gift of tongues for your prayer language can be a different than everybody should have that. But there's some people who have a gift. They pray, they pray in tongues and then someone else can interpret a message from God to the people. Or there have been times where someone has prayed in tongues and they didn't know another language, but somebody in that place knew exactly what they said. And that, that was a witness to them that God was alive and, and present in that place. And I mentioned the interpretation of tongues. That is another one of the spiritual gifts. And so, and the gift of prophecy, prophesying is just sharing. Sometimes it's sharing something off in the future that God is speaking. Sometimes it's something to edify, to bless someone. Something. Sometimes it's near, Jesus even prophesied his own death, resurrection. And even he prophesied that, sadly, that Peter was going to betray, was going to deny him three times. And those are, are prophecies. And he also had word of knowledge because he, he saw Nathaniel under a fig tree before he saw him. And how did he know that? He had a word of knowledge about the woman at the well. He knew uh, that he, she had five husbands and the man she was with was not hers. But he didn't say that to condemn. So if you operate in these gifts, let love be your motive. His motive was love. Even though he told her the truth about herself, she was so motivated by the love that he shared that she went she went out and told everybody. And a whole, uh, just a, a multitude of people came rushing back to meet this man who told her everything that she had done. So those are the gifts. But it says desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you prophesy. And so then there's one more thing. It talks about what's the conclusion of the matter. And it talked about praying in the spirit, praying with your understanding, singing in the spirit, sing with your understanding. So these are so powerful. And if when you don't know what to pray for someone, if you have a prayer language, a heavenly language that only God understands, you can just call out person's name and then begin to pray for them with your prayer language. So these are powerful gifts. So I just want to pray for you. If anyone would love to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit or receive a spiritual gift, the baptism of the Holy Spirit or your prayer language, I will just pray quickly. So Father, I thank you for those that are listening and those that Alyssa in particular, I'll just give her a wave out. So Father, I just thank you for the gifts you have given your gift of your son to come to live in a human body to live a sinless life yet die a sinner's death in our place and you took his his blood to create a blood sacrifice to be to be the the atonement for us to be the blood of the covenant that we have as your children i thank you for this lord jesus i thank you father for sending him I thank you that you said, Lord Jesus, that you would send your Holy Spirit back to us. And I thank you for that. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. And so you said in your word, ask and we receive, seeking shall find, knock and the door shall be open. So first I ask if those that are listening don't have not accepted you as Savior, Lord, that this will be the time that they would receive you as Savior and Lord, and then fill them to overflow with the Holy Spirit with the baptism of the Holy Spirit evidence of speaking in tongues. I pray that, Father, in the name of Jesus. Go, Holy Spirit, fill them to overflow in Jesus' name. And may healing come. If there are those that are listening, if there is someone that has, has a pain in their head right here, I just declare and decree, I command the pain to go in Jesus' name. I command every tumor to, to dry up. Anyone suffering with tumors on their brain to be dissolved now i command spirit of infirmity to go and i loose wholeness into their life in jesus name be blessed god loves you this is day eight see you tomorrow